Hi, it's Bruce, VE9QRP. You're watching a satellite tracking program displaying the location of BSAT. The video is sped up so that a minute in real time passes in about two seconds. The transparent picture in the bottom right is of an Atmel microcontroller, which is independently calculating the same satellite's location using my port of James Miller's Plan 13 algorithm. The processor has been further configured with a series of rectangles on the Earth's surface described in lat long ranges. These rectangles are meant to represent low population regions of the Earth, and when the processor determines that BSAT is within one of these regions, it raises an output pin, lighting the LED. So for instance, the LED goes on in the Arctic Circle and over Antarctica. This raised pin or equivalent could be used on board a satellite to save beacon transmit power over under underpopulated areas, improving the overall power budget of the satellite. I haven't fine-tuned the regions very carefully. The final copy would take account of the large amateur population in Scandinavia and Alaska, for example. Nevertheless, it's very easy to see that a good 20% of orbit time could be spent in a low power mode using this technique. This would only be useful if the power used by the processor in its always-on state was negligible in comparison to the power it was saving in the beacon. So we need to go to the bench and see how little power the tracker consumes. The meter on the left indicates microamps of input current. We've disconnected the LED and replaced it with the analog volt ohm meter on the right to show that the pin is still high. We'll leave that meter disconnected most of the time because the mic in the microamp range it still draws enough current to throw our results considerably. The ammeter, however, indicates some very low consumption indeed. During most of the time, the reading is around 30 to 40 microamps. Every once in a while, it bumps up to hundreds of microamps. What we're doing is putting the controller into a power-saving sleep for most of the time, waking it once every couple of seconds to do the tracking calculations, which take only about 10 milliseconds per track. The pin retains its state through the sleep. On average, we get a current consumption of around 100 microamps, depending on the desired duty cycle of the tracking, and this is orders of magnitude better than if the satellite were to determine its position through, for instance, onboard GPS. We can calculate this fairly carefully with a spreadsheet. Imagine we have a typical um, low-power satellite with a transmit uh, input power of 120 milliwatts and a reduced power mode wherein the uh, input power was 30 milliwatts and that 20 percent of the time we're in the reduced power mode because of this tracking. Uh, we'll see that the uh, average without the tracking is about 102 uh, milliwatts. We've made a considerable savings but we also have to calculate the tracker power budget and add that to the improve transmit uh, power budget to work out how much better we're doing. So the tracker, let's say, has a voltage of 3.3 volts. Um, its idle current is, as we said, uh, 35 milliwatts usually, but working current of 800. And uh, we're going to look at it to uh, undertaking calculation, um, uh, uh, f taking 15 milliseconds to undertake its calculation, and it's going to do one of those every second, which is probably better than we really need. Uh, and then from that, of course, we get a duty cycle of 1.5%. Um, as a result, our um, average power uh, over the whole um, use of the tracker is 153 microwatts. And uh, we therefore have a new transmit power budget of 102.15, and we've improved our power budget uh, by almost 15%. Now, if we don't have a real-time clock on board, we need to add about a milliwatt, uh, uh, or maybe even more, of power. So our power budget would not uh, would be a little bit worse, uh, down to maybe 13 or 12% improved if you need to factor in the... Um, real-time clock as part of this power budget. The HE Mega is available in much smaller packages more suitable for onboard tracking such as this thin quad flat pack at uh, 8 mm square or other SMD packages as small as 4 mm square. And microcontrollers of any brand or type with similar efficiencies will produce similar results. 
It would also be possible to make this process one of many that are multitasked in a main onboard processor that's running a small operating system. Of course, there's a price in complexity to be paid in this approach. The satellite will need to be able to upload its own Keplerian elements from time to time, and it will need a reliable real-time clock. This uh, will also require some sort of onboard bus to communicate with the microcontroller, such as the common I2C bus. Or, if the SPI bus were used, the microcontroller could be reprogrammed in flight. This approach also makes greater demands on ground stations, which minimally would have to take into account the region-based mode switching that the satellite does. In fact, in my opinion, tracking programs should all have programming hooks on them that allow an adjunct script or program to work out things like when AO27 will be in what mode, and this wouldn't be much different. In any case, the upshot of all this is that the power needed to do satellite tracking is so tiny as to be negligible even in the power-starved environment of today's small satellites. This raises further possibilities. For instance, a fleet of intercommunicating LEO satellites could calculate each other's positions and then transmit on a dedicated satellite-to-satellite -satellite channel only when another member of the fleet was in sight. The transmitting satellite could even calculate and perform Doppler shift compensation for the receiving one. For now, though, if the inexpensive CubeSat format is to provide sufficient power for amateur transponders, we need to apply every trick we can think of to keep the power budget low. I hope the approach suggested in this presentation, or one like it, might help us amateur operators adapt to these new constraints and thrive within them. I'll let the video continue for the next couple of minutes and say 73 from VE9 QRP. Thank you.